Well, welcome. Um, we're going to talk about how to contribute to docs. Um, if this, if you're planning on being in the Docathon later today at three, this is a great intro. Um, the it will show you the tools that we use and the process we use. Talk about how the docs get structured in our repos, um, and you'll want to. Um, Go ahead and fork and clone the Windows Docs PowerShell uh, repository in GitHub. But we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, so my name is Sean Wheeler. I'm the um, lead content developer for the Microsoft PowerShell Docs itself, the, the, the PowerShell product. And with me is Mike Robbins. Um, you may have remembered him looking more like this in the past. <laughs> I'll let Mike introduce himself. I'm uh, Mike Robbins. Um, we were on separate teams, but now this year, um, thankfully, we report to the same manager, get to work closely together, um, and we're leading the charge for uh, improving PowerShell docs across the company. Um, so why do you want to contribute? Well, this is an open source product. It's an open source community. All of our docs are open source. Um, so anything that you can do will uh, benefit not only yourself, but the rest of the community. Uh, it's a great way to get uh, recognition from the community. We, Mike's going to bring it up here. <clears throat> when you contribute to docs, um, we have a monthly update where we post who the contributors were, and we have uh, a uh, Hall of Fame. So he's pulling up the Hall of Fame on the other monitor here. So this is all-time contributors um, in the life of the, the repository. <clears throat> and if you're new to Git or Markdown, this is a great way to learn. How many people use Git and Markdown today. Okay, most of you. Uh, so a lot of this is going to be review, I think. Um, so getting started, <clears throat> we have a, a uh, contributor guide for all of Microsoft Docs that um, gives you the basic rundown of the tools and processes we use um, and it's linked to, uh, Mike's got it up on the other screen here. It's linked in the deck. Uh, and we also have a PowerShell specific contributor guide. Uh, the difference here is um, the main one is general and just talks about the process. And then each content set has its own style guidance, how we want things formatted, um, and uh, terminology that we use, uh, common terminology, things like that. So that's the content-specific contributor guide. Um, so some of the things, and <clears throat> this is what we're going to um, cover in the Docathon in more detail. Um, The PowerShell one, we have our PowerShell style guide here. Our editorial checklist gives the details. But for example, in the PowerShell docs, we have some formatting rules. So we use inline code markup. Uh, let me see if I can zoom this. So the back tick markings for um, commandlet names and variables any syntax examples, um, those kinds of things. And that's the work we're going to be doing today in the Docathon is cleaning up formatting uh, and, and other issues. Um, 
Who's not done any markdown? So you're all familiar with that. Um, <clears throat> we'll also be uh, talking about the Learn Authoring Pack. That's a VS Code extension uh, set of tools that make it easier for uh, authors to contribute. Um, Come on, slides. Okay, so let's get into um, the ways to contribute. The, the easiest way, uh, you're in the docs reading and you see a problem, see a typo that needs fixing. Um, you can choose the edit icon uh, right at the top of the page and that takes you to the uh, GitHub source for that page and you can from there edit right in GitHub make the changes and it will create a working branch for you it'll create a fork if you don't have one it creates a working branch and you can submit it as a PR that's great for small changes and single files but if you're doing a large change and you need to change multiple files then you want to use the full Git workflow which we'll talk about. Um, so let's look at how the docs are structured. Um, and this will be easiest if I can bring up the repository. Oops. All right, there's my mouse. So, <clears throat> in the repository, um, there's two kinds of content we have, and all the contents here under the reference folder, there's the commandlet reference, and we support uh, four different versions for PowerShell, uh, and then there's conceptual documentation and that's all under the docs conceptual folder. So if you drill into one of these version folders, you'll see all of the modules that ship with PowerShell. And you can go in and you'll see a markdown file for each commandlet. And you can click the edit icon here and submit a change. That's the simplified workflow. And we're gonna do one of those here in a minute. Um, <clears throat> let me get... The Azure PowerShell documentation is a little bit more complex. So for the Azure PowerShell documentation, we've got, it's, it's similar in the GitHub uh, Repaper documentation. We have, uh, we actually have Azure Stack in our repo, and we have the Azure PowerShell documentation, but we also have the older Azure RM and the older Azure uh, Service Management module. So that's all in our repo. But one thing is uh, for the AZ uh, reference content, the source for it resides in the, in the source repo, which is the Azure PowerShell repo. So if you're going to make an update and you want it to apply to, say, future versions, you need to make it to the source repo. Because every time we release a version, they create a uh, CI branch and they pull the content over from the source repo that the book called Saga generated and push it over to the docs repo. But let's say, let's say with uh, we just released 970, so if you want to update, make an update just to 970, you would go to that and the docs repo. But if you wanted to make an update to every version, you would have to update like 8, 3, 9, 6, 9, 7, and the source repo. So uh, one thing I think, uh, I'm not sure if Sean's going to show it today, but we use a tool called Beyond Compare, and that allows us to easily sync the changes between versions. 
So for example, <coughs> where's your commandlets? Right. And above the line is, oh, Sean's got it on the screen. Yep. So above the line is the, the conceptual documentation. That's what's in the docs conceptual folder. Below the line is the reference uh, documentation. Th that's in the version numbered folders that we were talking about. And so when you're in here, um, where's your edit icon? Oh, how did I end up here? Oh, I ended up in Azure Pack. Uh, I'm not getting your reference content. So the easiest way to get to, uh, let's jump back to the previous version. We're probably going to know there's been some issues with time, but I'm actually not getting it on there either, so it looks like we have some sort of bug. <laughs> so, all right, let's go. Um, We'll do it this way. So how many, know, how many of you have used the module browser or know about the module browser? So <clears throat> come on. Uh, there we go. Wanted a new tab. So the module browser is learn.microsoft.com slash PowerShell slash modules. And you can come in here and you can search by module name. You can search by commandlet. You can search by um, part of a commandlet name. So you want to find something that works with AZVMs. Oh, here we go. Let's, let's look at this commandlet. And now, we have the edit icon. And that'll take us to the source for the reference. Now this is what Mike was talking about. This is actually the source code repo now we're in. Notice we're in Azure, Azure PowerShell. Um, and this is the markdown for that and we could edit it. But when you make a change here, it's not gonna show up on docs until the next release. Yeah, sometimes that's difficult to understand. I've even had people internal to Microsoft go like, hey, I made this change two weeks ago. It's like, it's just once a month. It doesn't tell you the future version. You'll see it next month. So if you want to change what shows up on the website immediately, you have to do it in the docs repo. Um, and that's something, if you want to make a contribution to Azure Docs, um, just coordinate with Mike. <laughs> He'll make sure that it gets in the right place at the right time. All right, let's go back to the presentation. Yeah, and so um, we have auto merge, um, well, we have an automated process that merges any changes from our main branch into our live branch uh, on a daily basis. Mike's repo is set up uh, twice a day, Monday through Friday, and the PowerShell repo is um, once a day in the afternoon, the, the 3 p.m. Pacific time. So your change won't show up immediately, but it'll get there by the end of the day. Um, here's a review of the Git process, and this is how we're going to work um, for the Hackadoc. You'll want to first clone, um, is fork the base repo. So the, the steps here at the red arrows are one-time steps. You only need to do this once. You fork the repo into your personal GitHub account, and then you clone that fork to your local machine and you want to set up uh, an upstream pointer that points back to the base repo. Um, I'm 
I hope everybody's done this before. Pretty straightforward. Once you're in, you always want to start with a new working branch. Um, but first, <clears throat> well, if you've just cloned, uh, forked and cloned, then you're up to date. But whenever you're doing work, the first thing you should always do is pull from the upstream so that you get the latest information out of uh, the base repo. Where's my mouse pointer? So you want to do this pull so you have uh, an up-to-date local copy. And then I like to push that back to my fork so all three copies are in sync. Then you create a working branch with a git checkout. Um, and that's where you make your changes. You edit the files uh, that you're adding or updating. You commit those and you push that into your local repository. Then you uh, submit a, oh, you, you push those changes then to your fork. And then you can create the pull request to merge it back into main. Um, we have checks, uh, automated checks to make sure that you're not submitting a pull request to live. Uh, you should only ever um, submit pull requests to the main branch. And um, we also uh, want you to use a working branch. So don't do your work in main. Always create a working branch. We'll reject PRs that come in that way. And here in the Docathon, which can help people with that, it tells one thing, and Sean's just given a high level overview. But when you fork the repo and you clone it, you only have an origin, which is your, uh, your copy of the repo. You have to add an upstream. So you can do like get add upstream and then the URL to the yeah, upstream version. Because anytime you refresh, you want to, I use get fetch, you can use get pull, but I, I'm only run get fetch and pull it down from the uh, upstream and then run a get merge. But you can, uh, you can run get, get pull to do the two steps in one. All right, so now let's, let's do an example here. So <clears throat> I'm going to pick on this uh, commandlet here in the um, ADCS uh, administration module in the Windows PowerShell doc set. And uh, I was looking through this earlier, and I noticed um, this is the add commandlet. What is it? Add CA authority information access. And example three here is, what's it doing? It's not using the add commandlet. So what's the purpose of this example? This isn't a very good example um, for this reference. So I'm going to edit this. Scroll down here. And in this case, uh, I'm just going to delete it. There's some other things that I would change um, for our style guide here. We don't want to use prompts in the examples because you don't want to use the copy button on our docs web page and get the prompt uh, as part of what you paste and run. We also want to use the PowerShell language tag on the code samples so that you get syntax highlighting. There's a lot of other things I could clean up on this, but I'm, I'm going to leave it right there. Um, and I'm going to go 
Yep, I've made my change. So now we get syntax highlighting here, which we didn't have before, and that change, that example is removed. Where's my, What you're supposed to be seeing is um, down at the bottom here. Gosh, this is hard to do. Um, uh, I should have a form to fill out. Oh, they've changed the UI on me. <laughs> so. Now it's going to ask you to, uh, you know, commit your changes. You enter a commit message here, and I'm going to say um, removed. Example three. Dang it. And I'm going to click Propose Changes here, and this is going to create a PR. And if I had an issue related to this, then um, if you add text like this, fixes, pound, issue number, what happens is when we close the, uh, when we merge the PR, it will automatically close that issue that related issue. But for our purposes of our demonstration, there's not much to do here. Uh, remove unneeded example. And we have a few check boxes here. Uh, yeah, this is descriptive enough. And good enough summary. When you fill out these checkboxes, just use a lowercase x. Make sure there's no spaces around it. Uh, you can also, I'm going to click Create here. You can check and uncheck these boxes right in the user interface like this. So you could do it either way. Uh, it's a little slower to use the checkbox interface like this than it is to fill in the x's. And so now Mike's going to review it. Yeah. Yeah. Something's wrong with the monitor. How we do it on time. So it's 3318 is the PR number. Yep. And if, and if Stephen Judd submitted it, you have to check for dad jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, no, not yet. So, um, but you committed that review, didn't you? Yes. Oh, yep, there it is. So here's his comment. Um, so typically we would, if there's more work uh, we're asking you to do or some other kind of change, there's a couple ways we could do it. Um, in GitHub PR review, you can do suggestions um, where we, we tell you how you uh, should change it, and you can just um, commit that suggestion. Um, and it updates the PR automatically. Um, or we might ask you to do more work, and we wouldn't improve, uh, approve it until we can review it again. But um, he brought, brings up a good point here. If I'm going to, whoops. What is going on? I'm going to go grab this text. That was removed. Where's my... So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So we've made the change in in GitHub, but I don't have a, a local copy here. Let me bump up. Yeah, I'm looking for the keys. OK, so I'm going to go into the Windows PowerShell, and I'm going to do a uh, git pull upstream main. Make sure I've got the latest bits there. And um, if we go look at the PR here. Oh, I need to save. Hang on a second. Okay. Um, I'm going to go over here to, um, I've got the GitHub CLI installed. This is the easiest way to do this. Um, there's other ways to pull this in, but I'm going to copy this command. And <coughs> this is going to allow me to check out that um, PR to my local repo. So let's switch over here. I'll paste this in. And now I've got the, uh, the change pulled in. And notice it checked out here, the branch. Um, it's called sdwheeler-patch1. <clears throat> that was the working branch that was automatically created for me. And I want to go into code. And pull this over here. And we were doing that in the Windows Server 2022 folder, ADCS administration. Yep. And if we look, here's the file I changed. And you can see. There's no example three, but what we want to do is we want to add this to remove 
So we'll look at the examples and so we've got three examples here. I'm going to go grab that text I saved. And add it here, but this is going to be now example four. And let's get rid of that. And you can see there's other things I could do here. We don't really need a variable here, do we? We could just pipe the output of one into the other. But uh, for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to leave it like that. I'll go ahead and save. And now I can go in here and say, commit my changes, add, remove example to <coughs> remove commandlet. And I will push that up. And if we go back to the PR here, you'll notice when I pushed that, um, here's my new commit. Add remove examples checklist. And if we go look now at the files changed, um, it'll update. Uh, there's two files changed. And so now Mike can review and approve that. LGTM. You know, by mis removing the props and then misrepoing it, what I'm about to say doesn't really matter because it's going to PowerShell. But like in PowerShell 7, it's cross platform. So you don't get a B prompt if you're running PowerShell from a Mac OS or Linux. So that way it looks, makes it look you know, more cross platform, but also it, it doesn't show up when you uh, hit the copy button or copy the code. One of the things you'll see when you submit here is um, there's a preview URL. Uh, there's, there'll, there'll be a potentially a couple of different um, report comments that get added by our build service. There might be an Acrolink score that's uh, that's a like a grammar checker, uh, and then this preview URL. The Acrolinks, the, the links on the Acrolinks report you won't be able to get to because you have to have. Uh, authentication in our environment. And same with this preview, you won't be able to get to. But what the preview allows us to do is um, we can see the rendered page with the changes on it before it goes live. And so we can make sure that we didn't break the rendering somehow. That's all part of the, our review process. And now we're just waiting for the build to finish before we merge it. So while that's doing that, let's let's take a look at some other things. When you install the um, uh, Learn extension pack, where'd my cursor go? There we go. So let's look at Learn. <clears throat> uh, you'll get this Learn YAML, Learn Markdown, Learn Images, Learn Preview. It's a whole set of um, extensions that come together. Where's the main one? There it is, Learn Authoring Pack. So it includes um, all of these extensions you see here listed, and you can install or uninstall them individually, depending on your preferences. Um, it comes with the Markdown Lint tool, 
Um, and we have predefined Markdown Lint uh, settings in the repo, so you automatically inherit those when you're editing in our repos. Um, one of the ones you'll want to not install, it unfortunately it installs by default, uh, so you want to uninstall it. That's the learn validation and the learn article templates. The article templates are kind of useless. Um, I'm actually working on, after, after seeing the lightning demo, I'm going to work on some snippets uh, to make that better. <laughs> uh, and the learn validation is actually for local build validation, but it so trashes the repo that you don't want to do that. So um, it's a mess. But one of the things you get is um, you, this is a setting. You can turn it on. You've got this docs markdown toolbar at the bottom. And let me go back to the markdown. So say I want to uh, make something bold or italics, or I want to insert, uh, you know, make that a code block uh, in inline code. So you have these. Uh, this is a fun one, too. We have some non-standard markdown markup for our publishing platform for those alert boxes, like the important or caution, note. So if I wanted to turn this paragraph into a note block, I can select it, hit the alert, Let's make this a note, and it automatically formats it for me. Um, so that's real handy. Um, and then there's a whole menu of other things that you can choose from. Um, you can have it insert tables. Um, it'll do table cleanup, so it'll um, auto-size the columns for you. Um, some pretty cool stuff. And this works with any markdown. It's not just specific. There's features of it that are specific to our markdown extensions, but you could use this with any markdown document. Um, what else did we want to talk about here? Right. So all those things are certain standards. And Sean had showed you using uh, the PowerShell code stamps label. So for Azure PowerShell, it's going to be Azure PowerShell, all one word, except if you can run it in Cloud Shell. So almost always, you're going to use Azure PowerShell Dash Interactive. And what Dash Interactive buys you is if you've ever seen the Try It Now or Open in Cloud Shell button, it adds that button. So pretty much the only command you wouldn't use the interactive tag on is like to make TV account because when you open, open Cloud Shell, you're already ready authenticated. Did you want to show them uh, like repos? Yeah. Um, and we'll, we'll get more into that in the um, Docathon as well. But <coughs> um, there's, there's another extension that you want to install that's not part of the um, docs extension pack. Uh, where are we here? Um, so this, this one here called Reflow Markdown. And um, our standard in the PowerShell docs is we limit our lines of markdown to 100 characters. That provides easier readability uh, when you're looking at the markdown. You don't have all these long paragraphs that flow. It also makes PR review easier because it's easier to see the individual changes uh, when it's split across multiple lines. Um, we also have, uh, like in our Azure Docs repository, um, we have some automation that if your change is small enough, um, it 
qualifies for auto merge. So a human doesn't have to review it and merge it. But it has to be a change that's 20% or less. So take, for example, you have an article with 10 paragraphs. And those paragraphs uh, are all one long line, multiple sentences. If you change one character in one paragraph, one character in another paragraph, and one character in a third paragraph, your change is now 30% according to Git. Because you changed three of 10 lines. So that doesn't, you know, the three character change now doesn't qualify for auto merge. It has to have a human review it. And then it's hard to see that change because the diff is these big long paragraphs. Yeah, so for example here, you notice I have these rulers set up for at different um, character stops. So uh, 76, 80, 100, 120, um, or no, 90 and 100, that's what I have. Um, and this line, line 66 here, is going beyond the 100 character limit. Well, I can click anywhere in this line and hit Alt-Q and it reflows it to fit. And so I can quickly and easily go through an article and reflow any long lines. Here's another one. And the nice thing, so when you have multiple lines like this without a blank space in between, those get rendered as a single paragraph. So merging them together, you end up with the same result. Um, here's another ugly long one I like to reflow. Um, and, and the reflow is pretty smart. It doesn't know about code blocks. You don't want to reflow inside a code block because you'll screw up your, your code pretty bad. <laughs> Luckily, undo works. Um, but also, say you had, uh, let's just create a bulleted list. Um, and I'm going to do some really long lines here. It will, now, you might be concerned that if I went here and clicked Alt-Q, it would munge that list all into one big ugly blob. But it's smart about that. It doesn't, it doesn't do that. So I'll click on the long line, hit Alt-Q, and it properly indents the uh, child lines underneath. That works for bullet lists, numbered lists. Um, it also works for um, block quotes like this, except <coughs> for the R note example, that header has to be on its own line. So I'll do a blank line. I'll come here and hit Alt-Q, and then I'll get rid of that. Yep. So I'm going to merge the pull request. And what that'll do, that'll merge it into the main branch so we can go out and look at the main branch now and see the changes. But later today, as Sean said, it'll be merged automatically into the live. So those changes will be live later today. Yep. Um, let's get back to the... Where's my... There it is. Back to the slides and make sure. Um, so before we get there, any, any questions so far? Um, so contributing to docs is one way. Now, if you have, um, if you think there's documentation that's missing that you'd like to write, um, we're certainly open to that. We ask that you create an issue so we can have a discussion about it. But 
in some cases that may be better as a blog post and we have um, the PowerShell community blog and we use the same GitHub process. So the way this works is it's a, um, it's a WordPress blog, but you can create a blog post in GitHub. We'll do a review of it, help you write it, um, and, and do an edit pass on it. And then when it gets merged, it gets copied to our WordPress site and um, you can publish blogs on our platform. So if you're thinking about getting started blogging and you don't want to have to set up your own blogging platform, you can use ours and uh, we'll help you with the writing. So um, key takeaways, check out our style guides, our contributor guides, get your tools set up. Um, uh, take note of the differences between different doc sets, their requirements, styling requirements and such. Um, we didn't get to show beyond compare, um, but this is also a feature now in Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code allows you to do a diff between two documents and you can copy changes from one to the other. Beyond Compare does this and a much nicer interface, I think. We'll see that in the Docathon um, later today. Um, Scooter software, it's a free download. You can use it for 30 days. We use it all the time. Um, it costs like 60 bucks. It's worth the investment if this is the kind of work you do. Um, and it's cross-platform. It runs Mac, Linux, and Windows. So, uh, and thanks for coming. And come at three o'clock today. Thanks. <laughs>